Hey everybody, my name is Chris and I'm a tutor here at Chegg.com. I mostly do math and a little bit of computer science. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to solve the heat equation. So here we wanna solve this P to E. U sub T equals U sub XX on the interval from zero to one. And we have the boundary conditions, U of zero comma T equals U of one comma T equals zero. And the initial condition, U of X comma zero equals sine of two pi X minus one fourth sine of three pi X. So this initial condition might look kind of complicated, but as it, uh, as it turns out, this actually simplifies things quite a bit for us, and we'll see that near the end. So how do we do this? Well, first we separate variables, which means we assume we can write our function u of xt, which this is what we want to solve for. We want to find this eventually. We assume that we can express it as some function of x times a function of t. So I'm going to say capital X is a function of lowercase variable x and capital T is a function of the variable lowercase t, okay? So what that means then is that u sub t is going to be x times t primed, okay? Because if we take the partial derivative of u with respect to t, well, x doesn't depend on t at all. So as far as t is concerned, this is just a constant. So u sub t is just x times capital T primed. And similarly, u sub xx is actually equal to x double prime times t, okay? So then the equation becomes x, let's use a different color here. The equation then becomes xt primed, oops, xt primed equals x double primed t. So let's divide both sides by xt. And then the t's over here cancel on the right. And on the left, the x's cancel. So then what we're left with is t primed over t equals x double primed over x. So what's special about this? Well, notice we have everything over here is just t. Everything over here is just x. So the left-hand side of this is completely independent of x, nothing to do with x. The right-hand side of this is completely independent of t, nothing to do with t, okay? So what's significant about that is that even though that's true, these sides, uh, these two sides are always equal to each other. So this equation says this side completely independent of x is always equal to this side completely independent of t. Now the only possible way for this equation to always be true is if both of these are equal to some constant. So what I'm going to say then is that these uh, equal some constant I'll call minus lambda squared. So why am I saying minus lambda squared? Well, it can actually be shown that the constant that these two sides must equal has to be negative. It can't be zero, it can't be positive. Uh, it can be shown that it has to be negative. And to do that would make this video way too long, so we will uh, skip that. But let's just take it for granted that this has to be a negative constant. So what we actually have are two equations. t primed over t equals minus lambda squared, and x double primed over, uh, double primed over x equals minus lambda squared. So this first equation gives us t primed equals minus lambda squared t. And the second equation gives us x double primed, let's say plus lambda squared x equals zero. So here, uh, derivative of a function equals some constant times the function itself. So this is a known uh, ordinary differential equation. And uh, also this one is uh, known as well. So what we have here are two known, very common, very well known ordinary differential equations. So we've reduced our partial differential equation to two ordinary differential equations that have known solutions. So the first one is going to give us t equals c e to the minus lambda squared little t, because remember big t is a function of little t. And this one here gives us x is a, uh, x is equal to a times the cosine of lambda x plus b times the sine of lambda x. All right, so uh, and a, b, and c are arbitrary constants. Now remember that u is big X times big T. So what we actually have so far is that u of X comma T equals e to the minus lambda squared T times a cosine lambda X plus b times sine of lambda X. Now you might be wondering, hey, you lost the c, where'd the c go? Well, remember, c is an arbitrary constant, so is a, so is b. 
So instead of writing this, what I want to do is just say we're going to push this arbitrary constant into the parentheses. So this constant will be absorbed into this one and this one. So basically, if c is an arbitrary constant and a and b are as well, then c times a and c times b are also arbitrary constants. So just to keep things simple, let's remove the c from here and just say that it's been absorbed into this and this. All right? Now, we don't have to do that, but it is going to make things simpler for us, so why not? Uh, OK, so we have this so far. Now, let's go to page 3, and we're going to start using our conditions here. So u of 0 comma t equals what? Well, in terms of the function that we have here, u of 0 comma t is going to be, well, first, we're still going to have e to the minus lambda squared t. Now, what are we going to have in the parentheses? Well, if x is 0, then we have cosine of lambda times 0, which is cosine of 0, which is just 1. So we're going to have a times 1 when x is 0. So we just have a. Now, what about over here? When x is 0, we have sine of lambda times 0, which is sine of 0, which is 0. So when x is 0, this whole thing is 0. OK. So that's uh, then in the parentheses, we just have a, because we just have a times 1 plus b times 0. So we just get a. But remember, our condition says that u of 0 t is 0. So this equals 0. Now, the only way for this to be true is if a equals 0, because there is nothing we can do with t or lambda to make this guy equal to 0. This guy is never going to be equal to 0. Now, as t gets really super huge, this is going to be very, very teeny tiny, but it's never going to be exactly equal to 0. So the only way for this to work is if a is 0. Well, that's great, because if a is 0, this entire term is gone. That simplifies things quite a bit. So then what we have is u of x comma t equals b times e to the minus lambda squared t times sine of lambda x. All right, that's a b. So now let's use our other condition, u of 1 comma t equals 0, and see what we get from there. So u of 1 comma t equals b times e to the minus lambda squared t times sine of lambda times 1 is just lambda, so sine of lambda. And remember, this equals 0. So this equals 0. Now, the uh, only way that's going to happen is if b is 0, this is 0, or sine of lambda is 0. Now, as we mentioned before, this can never be 0. That's just not going to happen, so not even worth considering. What about b? Well, if b is 0, then this whole term is 0, which means u of x comma t is always going to be 0. And that's uh, we don't want that. That's not good for us. So we can't have b be 0. We can't have this be 0 ever, no matter what. So the only possibility is sine of lambda equals 0. Well, if sine of lambda is 0, what does that say about lambda? Well, what that means then is that lambda equals 0 or plus or minus, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, uh, plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, plus or minus 3 pi, and so on and so forth. So remember uh, from trig, if you have any integer multiple of pi, that includes 0, any integer multiple of pi, and you take the sign of that, you're going to get 0. So this, uh, what we have here, are actually infinitely many possible values of lambda. So what we want to do is say lambda equals n pi where n equals 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. So hey, what about 0 and all the negative numbers? I'll cover that soon. Um, so actually, what we have are infinitely many values of lambda, which actually gives us infinitely many functions that satisfy our conditions. So then what we're going to say is u sub n of x comma t, whoops, u sub n of x comma t equals b sub n e to the minus n squared pi squared. Okay, because if lambda is n pi, then minus lambda squared is uh, minus n squared pi squared. Okay, times t times the sine of n pi x. Okay, so this is uh, u sub n of x comma t. So then what we can say is that now, we have infinitely many functions like this. And what's uh, interesting is the superposition principle that tells us that if we add all of these together, we still get a solution. So what we can actually say then is that u of x comma t 
equals the sum from n equals 1 to positive infinity of b sub n e to the whoa, all right, to the minus lambda squared t times sine of n pi x. So this is what we have so far. Now going back to why didn't I also consider n equals 0 in the negative numbers here? Well, if n is 0, then this is sine of 0, which is just 0, so everything is 0. So we can say 0, but there's no need because when n is 0, this whole thing is 0. So it gives us nothing. Now what about when n is negative? Well, if n is, say, negative 1, then what we actually have is sine of negative pi x. And that is, because uh, sine is an odd function, that's negative sine of pi x. So that's actually going to cancel with what we get when n is 1, which is just sine of pi x. And that's going to be bad for us. We don't want to do that. So we only want to consider the positive values of n. All right, so that's why we're not looking at 0 or negative numbers. Now, we're almost there. So the one thing we haven't used yet is this. And we're going to need that to find the b sub n's. So u of xt equals this. And if we expand, well, let's, before we expand, let's uh, go ahead and use this. So u of x comma 0 equals this guy right here. So then u of x comma 0 equals the sum from n equals 1 to positive infinity of b sub n. And then if t is 0, then we have e to the minus lambda squared times 0, which is e to the 0, which is just 1. Okay, so nothing really worth writing there, just 1. So we still have the sine of n pi x. Now remember, our condition says that u of x comma 0 equals this, sine of 2 pi x minus 1 fourth sine of 3 pi x sine of 2 pi x minus 1 fourth sine of 3 pi x. All right, so we have to use this information to find our b sub n. Now, normally, we have to use some orthogonality uh, properties to find b sub n, but in this case, our initial condition here is uh, pretty nice in that it helps us find b sub n's very quickly. So let's expand the left-hand side here. That's b sub 1 times sine of pi x plus b sub 2, that's a b, times sine of 2 pi x plus b sub 3 times sine of 3 pi x plus b sub 4 sine of 4 pi x plus dot dot dot. And remember that equals sine of 2 pi x plus, or sorry, minus 1 fourth times the sine of 3 pi x. All right. So what we have here on the left-hand side is an infinite series, and on the right-hand side, we just have the difference of two terms. So what we actually see then is that we can start equating these by the signs of the pi x's. So here, here's sine 2 pi x. So this term corresponds with this term. And what we see then is that b2 must be 1. b2 must be 1, because sine of 2 pi x, that's like 1 times sine 2 pi x. So the b2 and the 1 have to be equal. All right. And similarly, uh, the sine of 3 pi x term has to match up with the sine of 3 pi x term over here. So what that means is that b sub 3 has to equal negative 1 fourth. Okay, so b sub 3 equals negative 1 fourth. Now, what about b sub 1? Well, there is no sine of pi x over here. It's just 0. So we can think of this as uh, plus 0 sine pi x. So that matches up with this which means b sub 1 has to be 0. Okay, so b sub 1 is 0. And what about b sub 4, b sub 5, b sub 6, and so on? Well, we're done with this, okay? There's nothing else here. We've used everything that's there. Everything else is 0. So what that means is that b sub 1 has to be 0, and so does uh, b sub 4. Oops. b sub 4 and b sub 5 and b sub 6, and so on and so forth, they all have to be 0. So the only non-zero b sub n's are when n is 2 or 3, because here n is 2, n is 3, and b sub 2 is 1, and b sub 3 is negative 1 fourth. Okay, so that's all we have going on. So actually, uh, we conclude then that u, so u of x comma t equals the sum from n equals 1 to plus infinity of b sub n e to the minus lambda squared t, or sorry, we know what lambda is now, e to the minus n squared pi squared t 
Uh, oh, I could have put that here too. Just fix that real quick. Minus n squared pi squared. Okay. Uh, times the sine of n pi x. But we just saw that uh, b sub 2, right? b sub 2 is 1. b sub 3 is negative 1 fourth. And b sub n equals 0 for all other n. So our conclusion then is that u of x comma t equals e to the minus n squared pi squared t times sine of 2 pi x minus 1 fourth sine of 3 pi x. Okay, so this is our final answer here. So this is essentially just this simplified using the fact that b2 is 1, b3 is negative 1 fourth, and all the other b sub n is 0. So this has been an example of solving the heat equation. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.